when I say the words excellent student, there is obviously some or the other person that you must have visualized. It might be you or it might be somebody else. So now in today's video, I'll be telling you how to be an excellent student, how to be a better learner and how to score better in all your exams. And my credibility for this comes from the fact that I've been on the top of my class ever since school began. I hope it happens in college too. But anyways, also forgive me if any of my points are leaning towards rote learning because that is not what I'm here to promote. Let us talk about setting goals and setting clearer targets. So now what I mean is, suppose you have a goal of finishing about 15 chapters of social science by the end of this month. So your goal should not be, I have to finish 15 chapters in a month, so I will make a timetable for an entire month because that will not work. You will definitely deviate from that timetable because it becomes monotonous and boring and you will definitely have some kind of intrusions coming into that timetable. So what you have to do is making your monthly goals into weekly goals and your weekly goals into daily goals. That means you have to make a timetable every day. You wake up that day, you realize that you have to finish one chapter today in order to finish 15 chapters in the next month. So on that day, you finish that one chapter. So you're done with a portion of your goal. And this is how little by little you can achieve your long term goals without getting bored or deviated from your timetable. Another thing I used to do in this department was looking back at what I achieved on that particular day. So suppose you had a goal of finishing two, three chapters on that day. So at the end of the day, you just look back and see if you have actually finished those two, three chapters, if you have any doubts from those two, three chapters. And if you notice that you haven't really completed those chapters, then you think of an alternative plan on how to complete them along with your next day's schedule. So this is how you have to ensure that by the end of the week, all your weekly goals are complete and by the end of the month, all your monthly goals are complete and all your doubts are cleared too. My next point is about how to be a better learner. Now, the most important aspect of being a better learner in school is running behind the concept and not running behind the marks. Because once you get the concepts, the marks follow. So knowledge obviously overpowers your mugging up quality or your ability to memorize. So what you have to do is every time you learn something, so what you have to do is every time you learn something new, you have to go back home and understand how that thing actually happens. I know this does not work for all subjects and all topics, but wherever it does, do so. This will help you write better answers. This will help you think out of the box whenever something out of the syllabus is asked. And this will also give you an upper hand in competitive exams. Apart from learning concepts, the next important thing is clearing your doubts. If you pile up your doubts for the end of the year, then you're going to regret it because I did this once in 11th grade. I had tons and tons of doubts in organic chemistry, but I did not bother to ask my chemistry teacher. And at the end of the year, I was clueless as to what I'm supposed to study in organic chemistry. So I suggest you whenever you read a topic on that same day, get the doubt cleared with your teacher or on YouTube. Because the clearer your concepts are, the better learner you become. The third important aspect of being a better learner is making your own notes. So this one is very important because I have noticed that most students have a visual memory and when they write it down, they remember it better. So make your own notes, make your own mnemonics, make your own ways to understand stuff that probably won't work for others, but you think will work for you. I'm not just talking about notes, make a list of dates in history, make a list of formulae in maths, make a list of formulae in physics. When you do things on your own, you tend to remember it better. And obviously when you remember it better, it results in better marks. Another key for being a better learner is repetition. And this works the best for subjects in which you have to memorize. So let's go with the example of biology. The first time you read NCRT textbook, you might not remember all the points mentioned in that particular paragraph. But if you read the same textbook about 10, 20 times again, you're going to remember the entire paragraph in itself. So repetition is the key because you keep refreshing it in your mind and you remember it better. Now let's talk about scoring marks, which essentially gives you the top attack. So anyways, 
When it comes to scoring marks, 50% depends on how much you learn, how well you learn and 50% depends on how well you write the exam. So let us talk about ways you can improve writing your exam. Number one is underlining keywords wherever it's essential in subjects like biology, chemistry, history, etc, etc, especially English. It's important that you underline the important points so that the examiner knows that you know what you're writing. Second thing is improving your handwriting and legibility and leaving lines in between two answers or just making your paper look much, much better than it was. Because the lesser difficulty the examiner has in correcting your paper, the greater impression you make on them. And obviously, you also have to adhere to the different formats. For example, in English creative writing or even in maths, there are some sums in which there's a particular way in which you have to solve it. So keep in mind those things and keep practicing them. Which brings me to my next point, which is practicing subjects where you're supposed to. For example, maths. It is important that you solve each and every sum that you can find in the textbook that is provided to you. Because when you do that, Definitely you're going to find some or the other question coming from those particular sums. Other than that, it improves your practice and the greater you practice, the more sums you can solve. And practice brings me to my next point that is practicing writing answers. If you're not naturally good at writing good answers in your examination papers, then keep practicing how to write answers, keep giving mock tests before the exam and definitely attempt previous year papers for whatever exam you're giving. And obviously neatness and legibility is important, but it's always secondary to what content you're writing. So do not waste time on making your paper pretty. Instead, focus on making your paper legible and easy to read. And my last and final tip for this segment will be do not go behind reference books. Because see, your school has given you a prescribed book for a reason. That is because most of your questions and examination related matter is present in them. And when you go for reference books, it basically just confuses you as to what answers you're supposed to write. It confuses you as to what keywords you're supposed to include. You can definitely use books for questions, but for learning content, you better use the books that the school has prescribed to you. Fourth aspect of being a better student. Well, this is something that I am proud of myself. It's because I've been consistently doing it. That is being an active participant. If you're being given a homework, if you're being given an assignment, a lab work or anything, make sure you do it properly and submit it on time. Because being a great student does not just depend on how well you write the exams, but it also depends on all the internals. So stop undermining all the weekly tests and unit tests that you give along school. Give them equal attention to score well in them too. And give equal attention to lab work, give equal attention to homeworks and try to submit them on time. Because when you do that, it gives you a sense of discipline. It makes a great impression on your peers and it makes a great impression on your teachers and it obviously makes your work easier because you're not piling up stuff, stuff for the end of the day. And when I say active participant, then I mean be an active participant in class. Ask questions, interact with the teacher, make the atmosphere so much fun that you actually fall in love with learning in class. And finally, being a disciplined student, and listening to your teacher. It sounds like a very nerdy thing, but honestly, do it because it's going to help you. Having a disciplined life always helps you and you will not regret it later. I'm not saying don't have fun, don't talk in class, etc. I'm just saying, listen to your teacher whenever they say something to you and whenever they ask you to improve. Now, a last and final few things that you have to keep in mind. Number one is pay equal attention to each and every subject. I know some of you take a few subjects for granted and take them lightly but don't do that because at the end your entire aggregate depends on all the subjects i've done this in 10th grade boards i took english and hindi really lightly and turns out they're my lowest marks in the entire in all as compared to all my board exam marks so yes pay equal attention to each and every subject now the second thing is being helpful well, you might have a lot of people who come up to you with doubts, then try your best to answer them. Because not only does it help the other person, but you get your concepts revised again. So 
try your best to help people because it comes back to you in some or the other way and next and kind of my favorite point is quality study so do not worry about the amount of hours you're studying do worry about how much you're covering in the given hours that you're studying so even 4 hours of study every day after school is enough for you to keep going in class to be a good student and to score really well in your exams provided you concentrate really well in those 4 hours well it depends from person to person on how much they can study and how much they can concentrate so always strive to improve next thing is having curiosity so i know there are many subjects that you do not wish to learn there are many subjects that get really boring so that's when you have to develop this curiosity inside you to learn more when you have this hunger for knowledge everything becomes interesting automatically and you feel like you have to know this and you end up learning more so being a topper is not just about writing really well in your exams it's also about how much knowledge you possess and the last and final thing is do not go behind the topper tag you can be an amazing student a really smart student without being on the top of your class too keep in mind that it is okay to do stuff other than studying it is okay to pursue your hobbies it is okay to have a stress free life it is okay to not be studying 24 by 7 you can still do great in academics so try your best give you 100% and look at what the results are and at the end i would just like to say these are just mere points there is no particular strategy to be on the top of your class or be an excellent student it completely depends on you your goals and whether or not you want to excel so i would like to end this video with a perfect quote excellence ke piche bhago success jhak maar ke uske piche bhagegi <laughs> so yes thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you really liked it i hope you take away something from this so yes thank you